Welcome to this week's End of Days update coming to you from Jerusalem, the capital of the universe forever. Look behind me, you see the Temple Mount where the Holiest of Holies was. It just hits you when you get here. The Garden of Gethsemane is right down the hill where that pressure was on Jesus to the olive press. They would press the olives to get the olive oil out. What an amazing thing to be here. Uh, it's, it's where our future is going to be so soon. And it just it hits you right between the eyes like, wow, this is the Lord's home. So we've had such a busy time. We went down to Petra, scouted the land out down there. That was quite a, quite a big drive. The first missile that's come into a lot that didn't get taken out by the Iron Dome hit uh, hours after we were there on our way back from Petra. But we were just up in the north uh, with, with Ronnie Levy. We got to go to a couple of kibbutzes to see where they were hit on October 7th. It's absolutely staggering when you see how horrific that was. So I got a little short video I'm going to show you. It's about a minute long in the middle of the EDU, and I'll come right back with you in a minute. This is Ronnie in the loca location right where uh, we uh, saw the devastation in those neighborhoods. Be right back with you. Greetings, everybody that watches the end of today's update. Just want to let you know we're here at Ronnie Levy, our dear friend. Amazing what Israel's having to do to survive. And I just wanted you to be able to see him. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in this week. Thank you for your prayers and for your support for Israel. We're in the kibbutz of Faraza. One of the kibbutz uh, hit the hardest. We lost 72 people here that were murdered inside their homes from C-53. And the ashes are still here. It will take uh, quite some time to renovate this community and to allow the families and the children to come back to the schools, to the kindergartens. But, uh, of course, we pray for the 18 residents of this kibbutz of Faraza that are uh, still in Hamas captivity. Women, children, elderly are kidnapped from their homes, abducted by these cowards. And uh, we'll, we'll come out of this. We'll come out of this and we'll rebuild. We love you. Show our support. No great things are ahead for you. And I believe it's all good. Okay, we're back. I mean, look at that. If you walked in those homes and saw the hideous things that were done, you can't even imagine it. We got to look at some security footage and watch how God miraculously kept so many people from getting killed. They were shut off by gates and different people showed up at the right time. What an absolutely uh, amazing thing to see. Local neighborhoods. We were exactly a mile from the border of Gaza. You could hear the whole time we were down there, there were shellings, bombs going off where Israel was taking out some more stuff. Israel's getting ready to go into Rafah, though. They're going to have to do that. Everybody keeps putting pressure on them like that's the deal breaker. They have to do it to the point when you get down and see those neighborhoods and see what has to take place for their safety they have to. Like right now, the, even the police, not just the IDF, not the Israeli Defense Forces, you have the police getting ready for Jenin. There's a whole bunch of information coming that there's going to be an attack from Jenin, so they're getting ready for that. On the northern part of the borders, we, we don't really hear anything about this. You've got Israel's evacuated all these homes. I talked about it two weeks ago, about how they had 80,000 meals ready, but they've evacuated all these homes from so many miles, and the government pays them to be able to go away from that, but the ones that are beyond that point, they've got to pay for it, and literally, it's a buffer zone for where Hezbollah is going to come against Israel. So the talk is Hezbollah is ready to do that. And even yesterday, you had the Jerusalem Post. You had Russia moving troops down into Syria, closer to the Israeli border. So there's all kinds of things happening. I mean, it's with, with, with here you are where all of it stands, you've got so many things happening in the heavens. You've got a blood red moon on Monday on, during the, the Feast of Purim. Uh, it's pretty, pretty crazy that it's an eclipse and a blood red moon. To go along with that, you have the devil comet coming toward America I and mean, coming toward the earth uh, on Monday. So it'll be visible on Monday. So you've got earthquakes on the eastern part of America going all up the sides of Tennessee into South Carolina, up into Myrtle Beach area. So you've got nature freaking out. You've got the heavens freaking out. And you've got the people that are surrounding Israel wanting to annihilate Israel on every turn. It's pretty amazing that our government, even our senators in Congress, came against Israel saying that Netanyahu should step down. If, if, if they could get over here and see how the, these things have to happen, Israel's got to protect itself. So we're living in uh, un, uncharted territory when it could be so blatant and so bold to come against the nation of Israel. 
I mean, you got things happening in Amsterdam, things happening in Europe, where there were uh, the lights for uh, for all these other religions were lighting up more than even Christianity. You have France today sending troops into the Ukraine. Now, Putin said last week, if NATO sends any troops into the Ukraine, it's World War III. And he even boasted the thought pattern, boasted the thought pattern of, uh, of this will start World War III. So that was yesterday. And today, France put some troops on the ground in the Ukraine. So it'll be interesting to see what happens there. But right now, you've got the alignment of nations completely surrounding Israel. You've got the world watching Israel, what they do about October 7th. If they could even comprehend, people go, well, why does it have to be so hideous? Look and see what happened. Israel has to respond. They have to get Hamas shut down. They've got to get Hezbollah shut down. And along with that, you had the Atomic Energy Agency again uh, coming up saying that Iran is speeding toward having not just six nuclear weapons, but 10. So you've got trouble from the Ezekiel 38 nations, trouble for the nations that are around Israel trying to annihilate it. It's all happening right before our eyes. Why is that all happening? Jesus is just about to come. So we always go back to it every time. What do the signs say right here? Israel regathered in 1948. Jerusalem won back in 1967. He said the generation that sees that won't pass away till all is fulfilled. But then you got the Hebrew language restored. You got the Ethiopian Jews brought back. You got the fertility of the land of Israel. You got the revival of the Roman Empire. All these things point to how close we are. And you had fish show up in the Dead Sea. How crazy is that? We were right down by there the other day. Even Sodom and Gomorrah, the Dead Sea turned blood red where Sodom and Gomorrah was on the Day of Atonement. You have all of these happening. You had fish showing up there in the Dead Sea. You got birds showing up to be clean the land up. You got the ritual baths around the Temple Mount here filling up with the water. First time in 2,000 years. You have uh, the archway for Baal worship get rebuilt in Palmyra, Syria. That's where the Tower of Babel was. So that's, the Talmud says that's the last sign you'll see before the coming of the Lord. So sign after sign after sign after sign pointing to the king's coming back. Uh, he, he wants you strengthened. He wants you blessed. We don't get into all this information just to go, wow, I know the information. No, it's about a finish line. These things show us that the king is about to come back. How amazing is that? So we're going to see him so soon. So we, we make preparation. When we look at the nation of Israel and all how it hits us that we've got to get ready, you have the Bethlehem star. You have the blood red moons. You got the heavens doing it. You have the X marks the spot with the eclipse in April. So this Monday, you've got the eclipse and the blood red moon. So the heavens are talking to us. The nations around Israel are talking to us. And look right back here where our king was beaten, went to that whipping post for us, and then he was taken out the gate and was crucified for us, but he was raised from the dead. So we come here to magnify him, to glorify him. And we're, we're so blessed that we got to be around Ronnie and literally see how uh, the, the, the military was affected by what happened on October 7th and see how the whole nation is ready for Israel to do what it has to do. The king's coming so soon. Let's magnify him. Let's glorify him. Let's honor him. This is his season to be lifted up. If he be lifted up, he'll draw all men unto him. Jesus, the king of glory. And here's his home forever. We'll come back with him and reign here forever. This is the capital of the universe for eternity. We know there'll be a heavenly one right over this earthly one. But take a look at that Temple Mount. Look at, look at the size of it and how cool it is. This is where our king's going to live and we'll live with him forever. Thanks for coming in this week. We'll try to get some more footage for you from what happened up north. Jesus is about to come. Have a blessed, wonderful week. We'll see you soon. Thanks for joining us today at the end of Days Update. If you'd like to be notified every time there's a new post, just go to the edu at josephmorris.com and subscribe to receive email alerts. If these posts and updates have been a blessing to you, please consider making a one-time donation to help get the message out or even becoming a monthly partner with Joseph Morris Ministries. Thanks again for tuning in to the EDU, and we'll see you next week.